Well, hello, shiny crafty people. It's Tim Totten here and welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanna to show you how to hem some shorts or some pants, you know, to make them shorter. Now, I have two different types here. Brad and I are getting ready to go on a cruise, which um, by the time this video comes out, because uh, I'm recording this a couple of weeks in advance, uh, I'll have been on the cruise already and hopefully be able to show you some great pictures like here or maybe here of cool stuff we did. But one of the nights on the cruise is a pajama night. So I can't wear my normal pajamas because, you know, they're normal pajamas that I've had for years and they don't look so hot. So I bought some really nice pajamas that have a standard simple hem in there. That's going to be really easy for me to do. And I'm going to show you just how I use a, uh, you could use a regular sewing machine, but I'm going to use a serger for this. And I'll show you how to do that. And then a regular sewing machine. But of course, because he has to be fancier, Brad got some really nice pajamas that have this beautiful edge and it's actually surged on there if you look at that. And so I'm actually gonna use the serger to hem these shorter. He apparently wants these to be quite a, a bit shorter so they're more stylish. And so uh, I'm gonna do that. So come down to the cutting table and I'll show you how we start doing that project. So I'm gonna need something to measure with and to cut with and I probably should mark with a chalk uh, holder. This is like a lead holder for like architects and engineers, but it's actually for chalk. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can buy one of these, where I got this one off of Amazon. Uh, it'll be in the description below. So I'm gonna start with the easier pair of, of pants here. Uh, well, shorts, you know what I mean? And I'm just gonna turn them inside out so that I'm gonna work from the other side. Now, one of the things when you're hemming anything of this nature is you've gotta really make sure that the that the design of the pant doesn't overly doesn't overly angle because I cut when I cut off a few inches here what's going to happen is that when I go to fold this this hem if I were folding a really big hem I'd have a difference between how the angle is here and how the angle is there luckily this is actually pretty standard um, I want to take off about two and a half inches on this for me so I'm gonna take my ruler and I will go to the two and a half inch mark, one inch, two inch, half an inch, and I'll just put that along the bottom edge. When I fold this up, it's actually gonna take another half inch off. So in fact, I'm gonna take three inches off the bottom of these. I'm okay with that. I know how short that's gonna be. And then you could mark this along, but I already know how, how far I want it to be and I'm gonna be happy with that. So I'm literally just gonna use my rotary cutter and cut that off. You have to be confident. Do it with confidence. Well, these also weren't that expensive, so I don't feel too terrible. If I really mess them up, I could buy another pair. Um, it's interesting, you know, when you buy a larger size, they think that you're also, I guess, a lot taller. <laughs> I'm five foot six. <laughs> well, I do tell people five, six and a half, but really, I'm like five, six. So I don't need uh, shorts that drop all the way down. Uh, to my ankles almost. They gotta be shorts, not pants. Two and a half, I gotta make sure I measure the same amount. Now, one of the things you could do was come over here and make sure that this is the same amount. So it is, and I could mark that. So this one, I will take to the serger and serge each of these edges. And then I'll take it back to my sewing machine and just fold it over and stitch it. Let's do that one first and then I'll show you how to do the other pair. So here I'm at my jerk, jer all right, here I'm at my Juki MO1000 serger and um, we've been using these for years in our workshop and they work so beautifully. Um, remember that a serger has a blade on the inside that's gonna chop any fabric off. So I wanna make sure I run this fabric that I don't want any more chopped off. I need to run it right next to the edge. Um, and I'm really just doing this to catch all of the fabrics. So what I'm gonna do is lift my presser foot and get myself right underneath there. I'm gonna start right about where this seam in the center goes. This is inside of the leg. And I'm gonna do that because it will, um, it will make sure that it, any place there might be a little extra thread hanging off or any issues is gonna be inside my leg and not be seen by anyone else if for any reason it were to have an issue. And again, I'm just very carefully stitching in there and I'm gonna show you a little closer how that's working. So it uses four threads to overlock, two that go up and down through the fabric and two that stretch around the outside of the fabric and enclose that seam in there. 
Now, you don't have to have a serger to do this. You could do this in a different way, and, and I will actually show you a different way when I get back over to the other machine. I'll use some of that extra fabric that we cut off and show you how to do that. So that entire piece has been now surged along that edge, and I'm gonna go back and just stitch it down. I'll do the other leg, and then I'm going to take you back and not only show you how to sew this, but how to just use a sewing machine in case you don't have a serger. All right, let's go back. All right, so we're here with the short. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, take this fabric out from underneath there. Now, I'm gonna start at the same point where I started surging earlier, which is right at that center leg seam, because this is uh, gonna be inside, between my legs, obviously, uh, down, down my thigh, and it'll be less likely to be seen by anyone. I'm just gonna figure out how much I want to turn that over, and I'm gonna do maybe a, not quite a half an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch, a little more than a quarter of an inch. And then my goal will be just to run this, keep it even pretty much all the way around. Now, if you had, my machine set into a table, but if your machine was not, you can take off that, um, that piece on the side and uh, run around, it's meant for seams and uh, it's meant for sleeves and uh, legs like this. Now, if this were a fabric that was a light fabric was really going to show through um, the stitching, then I would want to be really, really clear about this part. And I would probably go and um, iron this to be flat. I'm going to put my needle in the down position. Uh, I would iron this to be flat at exactly that measurement. But I know that it's really hard to see on the other side. You really can't even tell that that stitch is in there unless you look really closely. And I'm wearing this in public for, you know, a couple of hours on one night on a cruise ship with people who I will probably never see again, you know, other than our friends who are going, so. All right, so that's one leg already finished. And if we look at that, what that looks like on the other side. Now, I'm gonna make sure I pull it out and make sure this, look at that, it looks good. No problems if you ask me. So I'll do the other leg and then I'll show you what I told you I would show you on the other part, how to how to hem this with um, just a sewing machine rather than using also uh, a serger. Now I like, if you have a serger, I think you should use it whenever you can. It makes this job so much easier. There's no zig zigzagging required. Also, um, I don't, my machine doesn't, is only a straight stitch machine. This is an amazing uh, Janome 1600P. I love it, but it doesn't have zigzag capability. So since I'm not using a standard home machine that would have the ability to do a zigzag stitch, I'm not gonna be able to trap all this fabric that is, I mean, it's a, it's a definitely a polyester that frays. So I would not be able to trap all that fabric without doing what I'm gonna show you how to do. All right, so those are the two of that one that are completely done. Those are now finished as well. But I wanted to show you what you could do, which is imagine this is the edge that we've got here. It's raw, right? Just raw and I haven't zigzagged it. You can come along and iron in a stitch, a very small one, or use even a hem rolling foot. But I'm gonna do a really small stitch it's not even a quarter of an inch. So I'm lining this underneath my presser foot and going. And again, this might be where it, see how it's already fraying here? This fabric's already fraying. I'm running that quarter of an inch through there. And with this fabric, I'm kind of pulling a little bit tight. It has a little stretch to it. So I want to really make sure it's pulled tight. Not overly tight. I don't want to like bunch up. And here, be careful where you go across these stitches. But here's what's gonna happen when we go to sew it again. We have to then fold all this over again to get that entrapped. One of the things you can do, and they do this on really nice fabrics, is you come in with a pair of scissors and cut as close as you can. Let me give you a closer view. Cut as close as you can to that stitching line that's in there to get as much of this off as you can. Or if you're not worried about this, about this being super, super close, 
like a really close seam, you could just fold it in half again. And then of course, when you fold that, you're gonna fold it to about a quarter of an inch and then stitch right along that same stitch that you already did. Cause it's only showing through this side and this is the back side of the fabric anyway. So you would just sew right back along that stitch that you had before. And now when you go have the finished edge, this is the new finished edge and this is what it looks like on the other side, just one stitch going through it. Now you'll notice the factory did a navy fa a, a stitch. I wasn't worried about that. I wanted you to at least be able to see it and I'm not worried about people look at it. I use black fabric, but you could, black thread, you could use a navy thread. All right, let's go see what the other one looks like because it's more intricate. So I finished these rather easily with the same simple hem on the bottom edge, but I want to show you how to do those other, um, those other shorts that had this beautiful stitch along the bottom edge. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to turn these inside out and you'll notice that there's a couple lines of stitching. There is a line of serger stitching at the top, but then there's also this chain stitch at the bottom, which is actually a stitch that's going through. You'll see it at the top here and it's the stitch that's actually holding the two together. So what I'm gonna do is lay this flat. Now Brad wants me to take four inches out of this piece. He wants four inches out. So instead of cutting this entire thing off, what I'm gonna do is measure up two inches, draw a line, fold it at that, that inch mark, that two inch mark, and then restitch the, the, the small stitches holds together. And then I will go surge off the rest of the material. I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. But what I'm gonna do first is go ahead and make my marks on my piece. So I'm gonna put the two inch mark along the actual stitch that's on the fabric. Now it's gonna be hard for you to see it, but I can see it through here. And then I just need to put a mark along there. Now all of this fabric, cause he wants four inches taken off of these shorts that are way too long. All of this mark will get cut off cause I'm actually gonna cut four inches out of here. So this line will never be seen. I'll do it on this side and then I'll flip it over and do it on the other. And then I will press it. Again, I'm gonna make sure that line goes right along the stitch line that's in the, in the, the that blue um, accent fabric at the bottom of the shorts. All right, and just to be sure, I made sure I got a, long, a, 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 a friction pen that comes out with heat, which is great. So what I will do is I will come to the iron here and press. I'm folding this to the line that's right there along the bottom edge. See that line? The funny part is though, is that I did use a friction pen. So that line's gonna disappear now with the heat, which is okay though, because once the line has been um, ironed in, I don't need that stitch, that line drawn anymore. If this is something that I was gonna see that line later, might see it if I had left it in the stitching, then I would definitely wanna use this friction pen. Um, if you wanna use a pen like that, it's great for marking. You'll see it's gone. The lines literally just disappeared. You'll see here it's on this side because I didn't iron that yet, but it's gone. And then I'll just open up the other side. You're gonna see these lines right here. There's the lines. Can you um, see them drawn on there? When I iron this, so there's the lines. After I put the iron to this, gone. The lines have just disappeared. Really great for this kind of um, project if you're gonna possibly see that line again in the future. Now, like I told you, mines, you're not gonna see it because um, I'm gonna cut all that off. All right, I already drew the other one on, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the other one. Get that out of the way. Bring this up. If you like this little iron, I uh, put a link in the description below because I absolutely love it. It's a little travel iron. Uh, it's so good. And um, a friend of mine bought it for me a couple years ago and I have been using it all the time. I use, I, I, very between this one and a big 
Um, I think a sunbeam that I really, really love because it just makes massive amounts of steam. This one also makes a lot of steam actually for how small it is. It's a great travel iron. Um, and I usually carry it with me when I'm traveling, especially since I go and give talks about my favorite architect, Frank Lloyd Wright, around the country. And uh, I like to make sure my suit, my outfit looks good. All right, I'm almost done with this. And we'll go to the sewing machine. So let me finish this part and then we will hit the sewing machine. All right, so here at the machine, I folded those over and all I need to do is now start and I'll start on this at this seam right here. I wanna make sure it lines up properly. I'm gonna check the seam underneath and make sure that our side seams connect in the same sort of place. That's good. And I'm gonna go and go put my stitch just to the left, just to this side of the stitch that was already there holding the pieces together. And that's because I don't wanna accidentally get too much of the fabric that was already there. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. So I'm going just to the left by not even an eighth of an inch of the seam that was already holding this blue fabric on the bottom in place. Now I'm doing the same thing here, make sure that these seams line up properly, that we line up the seam. Ooh. I just hit the uh, camera with my head, which is kind of funny because you can't tell where the camera is here, but it's got to be between me and the sewing machine. So uh, sometimes it makes for a precarious uh, situation. I'm just making sure that all the fabric is out from underneath this so I don't stitch through extra layers of fabric. So Now you certainly could come in and just chop this off, but you would end up with a lot less fabric available because then you would put a quarter inch seam, you basically would lose an extra, another quarter inch. And uh, the trim here actually matches the trim on the uh, pajama top. So I've gone through and done that stitching. So you'll see the stitch here that's in place. And now it's, it's brought that up. See how it's brought it up to the, the right size, but all that extra fabric is in here. So we'll do that same thing on the other leg and then go to the serger to clear all of this fabric off. All right, here at the serger, I have all of this extra fabric from here all the way over to here that needs to come off. So what I'm gonna do, since I've stitched right through and it's done that, I'm just gonna come along and serge off all of this stuff here. And I will just serge on. It's gonna sound weird, but I will just start surging on and get myself close to this point down below. And then just literally, oh, hold on. I've got to fix the serger. Apparently the, the needle or the blade has been disengaged. To figure out exactly what's going on with that. Ah, yes. The, uh, the blade had been disengaged, so I've got to fix that. And I can go back to properly doing that. Ooh. Okay, so now I'm gonna surge on, like I said before. I'll start a little further back because I'm gonna chop all of this off that got caught in. Now you'll see it's cutting the fabric off. Before it was just rolling it into the hem, which was not a good thing. Now I'm gonna lift this foot up above this edge here so it catches on. And then I can run all of that underneath. So you'll see it's chopping all of this fabric off and now all of that's being caught the rest is being caught in that edge. And now when I get back to the point where I surged on, I'll just cut that off and let a tail run out. And then I can come in easily and pull that. 
And now these are a lot shorter and I'll give it a nice press to flatten it. Let's go over and do the other one before we, uh, before we show off the finished shorts. So there we have it. We have both sets of shorts. These are a little shorter. I haven't ironed them yet, so you can see, but they did get a little bit shorter from that crotch area. They were like five inches or six inches there. Now they're only about three and a half. And then Brad's got a little bit shorter, quite a bit shorter. He wants his to be a bit shorter. And look how good that looks. It still brought the exact same design as before on, and I didn't actually have to do any crazy measurement, just a two inch measurement down. So this is an easy way to hem shorts that have some kind of a design on them, either with a serger, like I showed you, or you could do the version I showed you without a serger. Well, I really appreciate you joining me. And uh, on the way out here, I'll send show you a nice, lovely picture of our view from our balcony. And until next time, folks, stay crafty. Bye for now. All right, do I show them a picture of us in our pajamas or not? All right, maybe just one quick picture. <laughs>